What's going on YouTube? I'm Nick Corona. This is my partner Bentley Buttons and we're here to talk to you about nice hash for simple miner. In our last video we talked a lot about the hardware differences um, and some of the other physical differences but today I really just want to get down to which one is better. Which one's going to make me more money? Simple miner or nice hash? Because I mean at the end of the day that's all we care about, right? Which one's going to hash more? So I have a handful of 1050s. Um, I run my 1050s on Neo hash. So what I've done is I have everything all set up for us. We're actually going to do, um, I have these uh, 1050s, the overclock edition. I have two of them. I have one installed here and I have one installed in my PC behind me. Um, this is all set up on Simple Miner. I'm going to go ahead and start it now since it takes a little bit longer to boot up and I already have the PC booted up behind me. So everything's already been benchmarked on NiceHash. I also went ahead and got the 2.0, the beta NiceHash, and the legacy miner so we can compare them both. For the sake of this experiment, I'm only going to mine nice hash since my simple miner is set up on nice hash. I'm going to turn off all of the nice hash algorithms um, that aren't uh, NeoScript. Also, I would like to point out that my simple miner is running off the nice hash pool, so they are both mining from the same pool. Um, so, in my opinion, at this point, you know, let the better uh, let the better system win, right? So while my simple miner is loading up, I'd like to talk about these 1050s. I have them because you know it's like one of the only cards you can get right now. Everything above a 1050 is pretty much sold out. I managed to get these ones pretty cheap. I think around 130. These guys were about 160. Um, for me, it was really experimenting with a card under two gigs. I got a lot of flack for getting my three gig 1060s and I wanted to see what a card could do without Ethereum altogether. Uh, I like to think that we can mine without Ethereum and still make money and these cards are proof of it. Um, they still have a decent ROI within three to four months and just mining Neoscript or Crowdcoin or whatever is most profitable they do pretty well. Not to mention they put out much less heat than any of the other 10 series cards and use much less electricity. From your 1060, your 1070, and your 1080, those cards are all gonna use about 40 to 45 cents electricity a day, just you know, depending on your rate, your power settings, and all that stuff. While these guys are gonna be averaging around 14 cents a day. That is so much less power. They don't even have any additional um, power cords or anything. You just plug them in the slot or the um, powered riser and that's all these things need. They're also very quiet even at 70 80 percent fan power they're not nearly as loud as like a 1080 and not to mention they don't put off nearly as much heat so if you're in a situation where those kinds of things matter to you the 1050 could actually be a card worth looking into. Um, maybe you're in a dorm so you don't have a lot of room maybe you have high electricity costs and you still want to participate in mining just a few things to think of, not to mention the overall availability. Alright, now our simple miner is all loaded up and it's hashing out at about 403, 404 kilohash per second. Um, yeah, it's just sticking right around there. 404, 404, 404. So now I'm going to go ahead and get it started on the PC and we will see what that 1050 GTX can do. Alright, guys. And here we have nice hash on my PC um, with just the 1050. Um, I also have the processor checked. I'll go ahead and uncheck it for the test, but you know that is kind of one of the advantages of running it on the PC is you can run your CPU also, um, which I'm pretty sure you can set up on Linux, but I will say it's not necessarily worth going through the trouble of doing because um, you know, for the amount of electricity it uses and the profit it makes and the wear and tear, it's, it's really a personal decision. Um, but anyways, there's our 1050. And yeah, let's go ahead and start it up. Like I said, I already have set it just to run on NeoScript. Go ahead and pull this in here too. 
Wow, look at that. So yeah, these are plugged into the same exact network. They're sitting right next to each other. And this one is getting 391, 392. Well, this one's pulling through 400, 404 pretty consistently. Wow. So just as kind of a second test, I also went ahead and put the legacy miner on here. So that uh, seems to be pretty consistently around 392. Yeah, there it is back down. So we'll go ahead and stop this one. We'll go ahead and just close that one out. All right, and here's the legacy miner. Turn off the CPU for this one too. Um, yeah, I don't have my address in there, that's fine. Even running it on the NiceHash legacy miner, um, 95 cents a day, it's really close to the same amount, 169 souls, I'll go ahead and convert that. Um, but you know, the other one is still over here just chugging away at 404. Um, you know, the next thing it really makes me wonder is, you know, how, how big of a difference is it to be using that, uh, that processor? You know, because that's, that's the difference, uh, you know, between 20 and 30, 40 cents a day. That could be a lot of money, especially someone that doesn't care about electricity or the health of their processor. So with the processor and the card running, you know, you go from 95 cents a day to a buck 22 a day. So all things to think about. There's a lot less information out there on, um, you know, processor mining. I've definitely been reading a lot about the wear and tear of it though. For the sake of the experiment, I use 1050s because it's what I had on hand that were exactly the same, you know, eliminate the variable. I can imagine how much different these numbers would be with a bigger card like a 1080 or a 1080 Ti, or even when you scale it across multiple cards. Seeing this big of a difference on this small of a card should be a really big sign to you. So all in all, I think you guys should do it. I mean, you get a higher hash rate and you use less equipment. It's not that much work to change the pools. Setting it up, like I said, can be, a, let's just say it has a little bit of a learning curve, but once you learn it, I will admit it's actually really nice. And my next video is gonna be showing you guys how to install that, how to throw it on a USB stick and get it going because it's super simple. I guess that explains the name. Even doing projects like this, you know, putting a 1050 in my PC, pulling out the 1080 and the 1060 I had in there. The computer had to restart a bunch of times. It had to roll back drivers, upload new drivers. Everything got glitchy. Just, you know, things like that, things you have to deal with. Simple Miner here, everything's included. It has all the drivers already. I can just plug and play any NVIDIA 10 series card or, you know, I have a Radeon rig down there, same story. But it's just so much easier to be able to plug and play. You buy two more cards, you can just shut it off. Plug them both in, turn it on, and pretty much walk away knowing it's gonna work, or you can manage it from your phone. So if you're, you know, mining pretty much anything more than a six card build or one rig, I highly recommend looking into Simple Miner because it really does make your life easy. Um, so yeah, I completely look forward to your comments, your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. If you find anything that's better, I'd love to compare that next. And Bentley Buttons would like you to check out her Etsy store and buy Red Bull cup holders and lots of bit rigs. Till next time, happy mining!